All right, I think we are live. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Welcome to the One Drop Shower Ministry of Preparedness. My name is Mike Albert. I am a Christian Adventist, and we have a 100-year plan for you to get prepared for the end-time events, for the second coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and how to uh, be the best you can mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, uh, in preparing um, for these end time type of events where we can um, better preach the word, better enable to us to have more energy, to have uh, shelter, to know how to help others to do the same, and really, really just get a grasp on what's ahead um, and what at any moment can be um, a reality. A lot of the world uh, right now for us um, here in the United States doesn't affect us so much as it does those that are, um, I guess, in third world countries or susceptible to um, not receiving help in, in the event of something. There are so many things that happen that uh, we are here fortunate enough in the United States that we receive aid in some form or another that would otherwise spiral us, our communities, um, out into a negative spiral, you know, perhaps uh, where there's no return from. Um, or that's such a long-term, um, you know, endurance um, that just really wreaks havoc um, and amplifies, you know, uh, uncontainably. It can't be contained or, or um, quarantined, so to say, like, like a disease uh, and spreads. Um, but if you're able to bounce back from that um, or um, have some sort of plan, goals, and mindset uh, skill set to be able to navigate uh, toward m being normal again or at least be able to adapt, improvise, and overcome a situation, uh, we are better able to uh, understand uh, where we're going and have a peace of mind and to spread that comfort and that faith, um, again, all to lead people to Christ, to uh, mirror that character that was in the Bible. And um, even though his ministry, Christ's ministry was only three and a half years, um, he still led an example his whole life and continues to be um, the number one best-selling book in the world is the Bible. And <clears throat> we're trying to put that into perspective um, for a larger, broader scale plan uh, than, you know, is unlike anything else out there. This is unprecedented. This plan that I have for 100 years, um, other than you know the big, the big secret uh, societies and governments that um, have this have their pl own plans as well too, they create things um, like um, these hoaxes, these these uh, by design terrorist attacks, these um, by design wars, even um, rumors of war. Uh, just like are in the news continuously, the fake mainstream, lamestream media news uh, really does a number on people's minds when they don't have their own 100-year plan. So make no doubt what I tell you, that there are puppeteers behind the scenes that are pulling these strings that have a 20-year plan, 50-year plan, 100-year plan, 500-year plan down the road. So when you see the uprise of a certain ideology, a certain common core of education, a certain health care, a um, certain media control, this is a longer term plan, uh, vaccinations, um, you know, the boogeyman terrorists, uh, these are longer term plans that they slowly want to engage different parts of the world, different society. Um, you know, and I believe it's also going a little bit further too and deeper over a time frame, a time span. Um, and um, like if you were to talk to somebody that grew up, uh, you know, in the 20s, in the 30s, you know, or their parents, how they were subjected to certain things and how they are, their health is a certain condition. There seems to be a pattern here where we are subjected to certain vaccines, for instance, um, and that um, it may have been measles at one point, may have been mumps another time, may have been, um, you know, polio another time. 
uh, and there are these side effects, so to speak, mentally, physically, emotionally, uh, that come about from this. Um, so uh, when you hear all these things of um, going on continuously uh, in the in those facets and those realms, you have to stop and question. All right, well, what are the side effects? Look at the past history of this happening. Um, do I really want to be a victim and a guinea pig to be experimented upon? Even now, with the fluorides in the water, the GMOs, the chemtrails, all right? Uh, uh, are our grandchildren 50 years, 100 years going to look back and say, wow, this was the chemtrail generation. And look at how they turned out. Look at how their children, grandchildren turned out. Um, because of that, and what is a side effect of that? They used to be this way. That's another big reason why history is controlled, um, especially now. I've, I've heard a teacher tell me, actually, that they don't teach history in their class, in, in their uh, school anymore. How is that possible? Why is that? Um, well, part of the truth of history is hiding the truth as well. So what better way to hide that truth than to dumb down uh, the students? <clears throat> Okay, um, so in the aftermath of such things that will spiral out of control, make no doubt uh, the world is going to implode sooner or later, mankind or from nature or from something cosmically, um, and we are going to be left to fend for ourselves off of nature, off of the land. Uh, and we're going to look today at how the Bible did that, um, what they used, what kinds of meats and foods and and grains uh, were used to barter, to trade, to grow. Um, shamefully uh, and, and quite uh, disturbingly, um, the decimation of the uh, Native American Indians here in this country, in their country, I should say, um, had, a, had, a, had a right, had a really great grasp on, and they still do, on how to grow um, you know, the corns and the wheats and uh, to live off the land. Uh, in harmony with nature, without over-harvesting, without uh, alternate, alternating the, uh, not that they could, the DNA back then, um, you know, ways to uh, grow crops and to survive off the land. You know, I heard a great uh, um, way to grow your own garden once. If you grow a small garden, try this. I tried it once. Um, I forget what happened. I, did, I didn't grow the foods or something. Um, your implanted DNA can be um, put upon seeds. Take the seeds that you plan on growing, whatever they are, and you put them in your mouth and your saliva, and you let it soak in there for 20 minutes. And somehow, that DNA of your saliva gets imprinted onto that seed. And then those crops that you grow are made specifically to be more in harmony with you. Now, my concern is with growing crops um, is nowadays that they're subjected to the rain um, that comes in a polluted form because of the chemtrails, uh, because of what's being absorbed with uh, pr precipitation into the atmosphere from the ground that is toxic as far as I'm concerned. Then that comes back down, um, you know, of course, through the cycle. Uh, from the clouds and rain, but also into the mountains as um, snow melting, streams, rivers, so forth and so on, tributaries back into um, us as well too. But a lot of it gets filtered through the ground. Um, but then you also see if you water your plants as well too, you're watering with the fluoride, you know. So um, I think the ideal way to grow some small gardening is uh, a greenhouse, and distilled water. So, something to think about. Um, but we're going to see what we can get out of the Bible today from um, the foods mentioned in there and maybe grasp some of the uh, the trades that went on. Um, if you think about how in the uh, beginning of, and they do this in a lot of other countries too, you see it in, um, in this Cambodia uh, fellow Morris, I think it's 108 Morris 108 is the name of his channel. He's in Cambodia. And he takes his camera and he goes around to the markets in Cambodia. Um, and same will be in the aftermath of something catastrophic. We will need to barter. We will need to go to market. We will need to establish trade routes 
um, from you know distant areas or uh, distant other traders it might be fur trade um, it might be uh, fish it might be meat uh, things that we cannot grow so easily in uh, certain areas where we are whether it's geographics or whether it's uh, the population of a, of a species uh, that isn't or the skill set you know I may not have the skill set as a fisherman but I do as a, a forager for certain plants and vegetables and uh, nuts and berries where um, someone else that is a great fisherman you know catches hundreds of fish a week I want to know that person and exchange that barter that's that, that uh, trade of the fish for the berries so forth and so on or it might be just you know fixing something, a skill, of, a trade skill to fix something physically. Um, doctors as well. Big concern. How do you do dentistry in an off-grid situation? Do you have a dental kit, a dental emergency kit for fillings, for extractions, uh, for pain? Um, you know, we have to turn back the clock, the hands of time, you know, 200 years. How do they do it then? What were the tools being used? And how can we get those tools now, you know, to be prepared for that. <clears throat> Alright, so let's begin with a prayer and then we'll get into some scripture. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this uh, ministry broadcast of um, us being prepared for um, understanding the uh, foods and the wheats and the grains that were used in, in biblical times, Lord, and help us to apply that to our preparing now for the aftermath of uh, our societies breaking down and for right before your son comes for the second time uh, how we will be persecuted and in need of um, leaving cities and leaving populated areas and going into the wilderness and how we may apply uh, your concepts from the bibles and the books there uh, to those times and put them back into place uh, for use please bless our viewers their homes their cars their travels with mercy Please bless their finances and prosperity. Please bless their jobs and their careers and their schools. Please bless their children, their grandchildren and great-grandchildren. And please bless their communities, their churches, uh, their hospitals, their law enforcement and uh, first responders. And uh, please bring our boys and girls home from our military, Lord. Please bless our President Trump and Vice President Pence, their families and um, <clears throat> all their uh, picks for their cabinets and their positions. Uh, please help them to uh, do their jobs in honoring and glorifying you, Lord. We invite your Holy Spirit to be with us now in the midst of our of our uh, ministry here, Lord, and and in the midst uh, of our viewers as well. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. All right. So I'll be reading from the King James Version of the Bible. Uh, this is the Andrew Study Guide that has the uh, commentaries uh, underneath, and. Um, in the middle there, there are the uh, further reference guides to uh, cross-reference over thousands of years that ensure you and enable you to understand and know that the Bible is true. Okay. So I went into the uh, index, as I always do, just to, uh, as the Holy Spirit guides me to pick out some different topics of um, this as well. Um, and I did come across one. And I just lost the other one, who is uh, wheat. So wheat is one of the things that uh, are uh, used in growing and in bartering and in um, cooking and making flour and making all different other things with the wheat as well. Um, you know, we'll see what some of that has to say. We'll see what we can pick out of that. So we got something in Psalms, Amos, Matthew, John, 1 Corinthians, and Revelation. All right. Let's start in reverse this time and go backwards. So let's start in Revelation 18, 13. So in Revelation 18, 13. All right, and the title of this is The World Mourns Babylon's Fall. Um, now, I don't expect to get much in the way of Wheat, specifically wheat, meaning literally a lot of um, the foods mentioned in the Bible here are imagery, a metaphor of meaning something else, uh, but we'll see, maybe we'll get lucky. Um, 
So in 18, what did I say? 13, right, 1813. But let's go to the commentary, see if there's something for uh, 13 specifically. And it just says 12 and 13, similar lists in Ezekiel. All right. Um, oh, I see another word here. Maybe we'll look into it. It says merchants. I looked up trader. That wasn't in there. I looked up barter. It wasn't in there. A trade. Oh, there was a trader, meaning a bad person. You know, backstabber. All right. Um, so let's go here first in uh, 13. Um, actually, I have to back up to, yeah, it looks like they were listing a bunch of different things here. <clears throat> actually, uh, let's go to 11. And the merchants of the earth will weep and mourn over her. Um, usually when they say her, it means church. Uh, for no one buys their merchandise anymore. Merchandise of gold and silver, precious stones and pearls, fine linen and purple, silk and scarlet, every kind of citron wood, every kind of object of iron, every kind of object of most precious wood, bronze, iron, and marble, and cinnamon, and incense, fragrance, and oil, and frankincense, wine, and oil, fine flour, oil, fine flour, and wheat, cattle, and sheep, horses, and chariots, and bodies, and souls of men. The fruit that your soul longed for has gone from you, and all those, all the things which are rich and splendid have gone from you, and you shall find them no more at all. The merchants of these things, who became rich by her, will stand at a distance for fear of her, torment, weeping and wailing, and saying, Alas, alas, the great city that had that was clothed with fine linen, purple, and scarlet, and adorned her with gold and precious stones and pearls. For in one hour such great riches came to nothing. Every shipmaster, who, all who traveled by ship, sailors, and all as many trade on the sea, stood at a distance and cried out when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, What is like this great city? <clears throat> All right, so it seems like a lot of turmoil going on here and a lot of um, uh, flipping about here, uh, things being turned upside down. But I'm looking here quick uh, in verses 9 through 10. Uh, the kings of the earth who committed fornication and lived luxuriously with her will weep and lament for her when they see the smoke of her burning, standing at a distance for fear of her torment saying, Alas, alas, that great city of Babylon, that might, that mighty city, for in one hour your judgment has come. Okay, so the city of Babylon, of Babel, built um, where those that were there tried to build a um, city that was without God, that didn't need God, that kept God out of there you know, out of their picture. Um, and God doesn't like that. You know, God's a jealous God, and there is only one God, and there is to be only, you know, one God. There, should, there is to be no other idols. Like if I was to idol this shirt or this elephant or, um, you know, these flowers, um, you know, or this red thing behind me, if that was my God, my idol, uh, that would upset God. That would make him very unhappy. Um, and he would hopefully take that away from me, or destroy it, or confound my language uh, if it was involving others. Um, all right, so let's see what we can get out of this from the commentaries. It's pretty self-explanatory, but all these uh, material, worldly things uh, are, you know, have have lost their meaning. <clears throat> all right, so in verse uh, nine through nineteen, describes the outcome of the sentence pronounced. In verses 5 through 8, uh, in the style of an ancient lament. Okay, uh, 9 through 10, kings of the earth weep. Uh, the political rules of the world caused by Babylon's destruction, but now mourn the consequences of their action. Uh, expresses uh, One hour expresses the rapidness of the final destruction. Merchants of the earth. 
the economic side of Babylon was not emphasized in chapter 17. All right, uh, clothed fine linen, the dress of the righteous, Babylon uses a Christian face to deceive the world. Interesting. And uh, I think we did the rest. That's all. That's all we got up to. Um, but take a look at all these materials and these things that are listed here. Besides what we were um, hoping to get out of this, just the foods and the uh, the berries and the wheats and stuff, um, as far as for trade and what scriptures used uh, the, in that time frame, look at all these other things that they valued at that time. Um, bronze, iron, marble, cinnamon, incense, fragrance, frankincense, uh, unfortunately, wine, um, it could be not fermented, it could be the grape wine, like when Jesus uh, did, uh, oil, fine flour, wheat, cattle, sheep, horses, chariots, but they throw into this bodies and souls of men. Interesting how they put that all tied into those material things as if um, to belittle them, as if to make those bodies and souls of men less or equal to a uh, material, earthly, worldly um, comparison. Um, silk, pearls, linen, um, ivory, woods. Um, so a lot more that we're getting out of this than, uh, than just the foods as well. Um, and these are things, you know, I always think about oil a lot when, because uh, I love olive oil, I love using my olive oil, um, coconut oil. Who would have thought 20 years ago coconut oil would be so popular? I mean, there are, are investments of coconut trees going off the charts. You want to invest in something, go to coconut trees, man. You know, open up a coconut farm or, I know there's in the southern uh, hemisphere there, they have in the tropics, um, I think it was Brazil or something area, uh, where they have Argentina, they are coconut farms looking for investors. Uh, it may not be such a bad idea because you see a lot of them on the market uh, now. They're not cheap either. These little bottles are, you know, five, six, eight dollars. Um, healthier for you? Well, supposedly, you know, there's always that fad of the latest thing uh, that we find out 20 years later, you know, causes this or the side effect of that. Uh, but for the most part, it seems to be pretty good. Um, <clears throat> so things to consider for in the aftermath of preparing uh, all of these and see what resonates with you. Like, oh, marble. I know marble. I can recognize marble. I know how to fine-tune marble. We'll put that together. So that might be something you want to consider uh, getting more involved with uh, for uh, in consideration and preparing. Uh, or perhaps you want to get land that has marble on it. Or you, know, you could quarry that marble uh, that has a value. Or, I mean, um, but that's even harder. Simpler things are the things that are already in nature, ginseng for perhaps, uh, roots that already grow naturally, um, you know, the pine needles off of pine, pine trees, the sap, um, things that are rapidly reproduced. <clears throat> I know right now insects are becoming more and more popular in the world for eating, and they are uh, nourishing for, for to some extent, uh, and they're very cheap to uh, feed to reproduce. Some of them literally eat dirt and wood, um, and they're quite abundant. You know, if you compare that to five pounds of insects that you get, as compared to five pounds of meat that you got from a cow, and what it took you to raise that cow and to feed that cow and to process that cow down to those five pounds of edible meat, uh, it's quite extraordinary the uh, difference of the uh, price and the time in order to get that. Um, that quality of um, sustenance into your body. Uh, so a consideration. Uh, what's not mentioned here is fish. I'm, I'm they mention a lot of other things. They don't mention fish in here. <clears throat> All right. So um, let's see what else we can get for wheat. Oh, wait. Actually, I saw some. First, let's go to merchants. I think that's more important. Uh, let's see if we get anything else in the index here from being a merchant. Okay, M E R. Mercy Merchants. All right. 
Um, let's see, we got only three mentioned in here, uh, but I'm sure if we go to the um, uh, eSword, probably be 20 in there, eSword.com or .org, is a program you can download for free. It's just the letter E in the sword, like fighting, battling, sword, S-W-O-R-D, dot com or dot org. They probably have both. Uh, but the three mentioned here, it gives you a couple of words with that, and then the reference, the uh, book. So the first one is, Set in a City of Merchants, Ezekiel 17.4, Have multiplied your merchants, and merchants were the great men. All right, so let's, uh, um, perhaps that was right where we were, yeah, 18... Uh, 23. Okay. Um, but let's go back to that and see if we can get something more out of that. Merchants were the great men in 1823. So we're going to move our wheat marker there to Revelation 1823. 1823 was a good year. I remember it well. Um, actually, no, we didn't read that. It is a perfect example. <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry, it was merchandise. No, merchandise, merchant, yeah. It's in 1811, and it wasn't mentioned right there. It was mentioned 1823. So there's one perfect example of it being an e-sword <clears throat> being used. All right, so let's see. For um, the commentaries, it goes 22 to 23. And the title of this is The Finality of Babylon's Fall. We'll just read the whole thing. It goes from 21 to 24. Then a, mighty, then a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and threw it into the sea, saying, Thus the violence of great city Babylon shall be thrown down and shall not be found any more. The sound of harpists, musicians, flutists, and trumpeters shall not be heard in your in you any more. No craftsman of any craft shall be found in you any more, and the sound of a millstone shall not be heard in you any more. The light of a lamp shall not shine in you any more, and the voice of bridegroom and bride shall not be heard in you any more. For your merchants were the great men of the earth, for by your sorcery all the nations were deceived, and in her was found the blood of prophets and saints and all who were slain in the on, on the earth. So this great city of Babylon, you can compare this to some countries too as well, for all the greatness that it did, it was in their own eyes for their own benefit for themselves, um, and it was abused and taken advantage of those with those skills and trades and those merchants that were so great. Uh, it was, um, how should we say, starts with a T. I don't know. It was, um, it, it was destroyed. It was not taken advantage of. It was, um, Put to use in the wrong way. It didn't glorify God. There was no honor uh, given to God. No respect. Uh, it was a lot of misguided um, direction. And here comes this angel saying, talking to the city, like this rock I throw in the ocean um, in a violent manner, so shall this city be taken down because of the way it is and it almost it almost reminds me of the United States the way it is now uh, without people repenting without people praying the proudness the idolatry um, you know the the wickedness of all these different uh, directions uh, especially away from how this country started as a Christian nation and still is a Christian nation and the Constitution is based upon Christian principles uh, from uh, the scholars that put it, wrote it together because they were God-fearing 
um, Bible-thumping, gun-carrying uh, constitutionalists uh, before their time. And thank God that they did uh, craft this constitution based upon biblical principles, based upon Christianity. Um, <clears throat> but these merchants here, they call great. Uh, and they were great, but yet victims of this environment, of this type of uh, lifestyle. So with all good-hearted intentions, if you have your readiness and have it in your mind what you're going to do in the aftermath of preparing and how you're going to trade and barter, if you don't have the right intentions in mind behind that or you get corrupted yourself uh, with wickedness or a city like Babylon, it's all for nothing. It doesn't glorify God. Uh, so you have to keep yourself checked in check and in line and continuously give yourself a check up from the neck up. Am I glorifying and honoring God with this skill, with this barter, with these trades? And what am I a part of as well too? Uh, God does not, does not want us to affiliate even with those that are um, wicked, that are outright, you know, lusting of the flesh. He wants us to really uh, plant seeds where they will grow in fertile soil. Uh, so if if a friend of mine is a bartender uh, and he spends his time in that area, that arena, sort of like, you know, think of a bar as a city of Babylon, do I really want to continue to put 50, 60, 70 percent of my time with that friend uh, where the seeds that I drop are continually squashed, crushed, you know. It's like dropping a seed in oil. Is it going to grow? No. Um, but you continue, But you do pray for them. You do pray for that, uh, that person and, um, and to try to continuously plant something that might grow, but without so much of your time spent as it would be more wisely spent um, where you would get a better reaction or a better bonding or someone that's not so involved in that wickedness. Um, so take no offense to that if you are that bartender type of person. Um, but as a living a Christian life, we have to focus our energies, you know, to the best of winning souls for the kingdom of Christ. We can't put 100% into an area and win, maybe win one soul as if we could put, uh, you know, that 100%, 90, 99% of it towards, you know, winning 100 souls over the lifespan that we have, this short period of time that we have here on earth. And um, praise and honor, glory of God uh, across that time span in a more effective way. So shall it be in the end times in what we choose to indulge in for the aftermath. Some people are prepping with cigarettes, with alcohol, knowing how to ferment, you know, grain alcohol, whiskey, or what's it called, moonshine, and the skills of uh, that type of association that will not be glorifying God. Um, so keep that in mind as well, too. Will those items be in demand? Absolutely. Uh, but I believe the what will be more in demand is God's Word in the Bible. And it's written in that as well, too, that men shall seek the Word and not find it. Therefore, it will be more in demand than a pack of cigarettes, tobacco. Um, and then there are those that will argue about um, the demand of... Uh, cannabis, marijuana, stuff that uh, it would be considered, um, you know, illegal now or by prescription now, um, that it's held as medicinal. I don't know. I mean, if you're getting high off of something, and it could be even considered caffeine as well, too, if your mind is affected and your functionality is affected by something, is it really 
God, God's will for you to put that into your body. There are hemp seeds. There are hemp, a lot of different hemp type of uh, types of things. Um, but then again, if it's recreational abusiveness, I'll look at the different forms of alcohol too. There is rubbing alcohol. There's um, antiseptic. There's you know seventy percent alcohol, ninety percent alcohol. But it's not nothing you would drink. It's medicinal type of alcohol. So if if it has a medicinal effect, and a, not a narcotic, um, mind altering type of effect, it could be considered then um, not a sin. You know, not offensive to God. All right. So as a merchant. In the aftermath, you want to be able to have your mind open to a lot of things, but not to offend God. Um, and that's something very important uh, to choose and make that choice of now. All right, a little bit off on a tangent there. Let's see what the um, commentaries have to say about that. Uh, and that was chapters, um, I'm sorry, that was Revelation 18, 21 through 24. And let's see what the commentaries have to say. Um, Babylon's fall is complete. No more music, workmanship, food production, or marriage. Um, sorcery is magical arts. 24. Blood. The main ground for Babylon's punishment is the way she treated God's people. Okay. So, as a whole, just like here, just like all over the planet now, those in charge, those that are elected or um, selected in positions of authority or power that influence societies, uh, so is a nation, city, judged. Uh, because of that influence and that spread of that plague or disease, or goodness as well. It's a tough job. Um, not many people could do it. Not many people want to do it. Be a boss, to be a leader, to be in charge. Uh, so how do we um, navigate that field of decision making? Well, first of all, it's got to be biblically based. If it's not based in the scriptures. It doesn't honor God, glorify God. Then it's the wrong decision. And that's missing probably 99.9% .9 of the time in our leaders today. It seems like we're devolving and not evolving um, towards God, towards back to Christ, which is a big part of what's wrong with this world and these countries today. Uh, you could see it strongly in our own country <clears throat> since the Ten Commandments, since the Ten Commandments were removed. They were taken out of the courthouses, uh, they were taken out of the schools. Prayer was taken out of school. Songs, patriot songs. I don't even know if they say the Pledge of Allegiance anymore in school. <clears throat> I think, God, they still do it at baseball games. Um, do they? Oh, they sing the National Anthem, I think. All right. I don't, I don't watch sports. <clears throat> and the sports, uh, those, in, those sports figures that are um, influential and have the attention of the media... Uh, are reprimanded when they say the word Jesus or Jesus Christ. Uh, are you serious? They're not allowed to say that no more? Oh, you just have to say God? Because Jesus Christ is now considered by some media offensive. Well, praise God that uh, the word Jesus Christ was mentioned a lot in the inauguration of Donald Trump. That was beautiful. Never heard it so many times in the 20 years combined. Right? <clears throat> okay. Um... So besides the goodness that could be extracted from these passages about being a merchant, about the merchandise as well, too, uh, there's a lot of negativity that surrounds that, that we have to be aware of. Um, and people's ill intent to misguide people as well. And it's done sort of like a, sort of like a car salesman. Sorry, car salesman. But most, peop most car salesmen have ill intent of misguiding people to gain the most maximum money 
for their profit instead of being honest and leading and guiding, guiding them into a direction that could save them money. Um, real estate, a lot of these big, fast-moving uh, necessities of life, not necessities, these wants of life, are <clears throat> people being misled, the ill intentions, the... the the um, stealing, robbing, and cheating. Even electricity. Nikola Tesla had it solved 100 years ago for free wireless electricity that God gave us from the ionosphere and, and the grounding of the earth and to be broadcasted wirelessly. Our devices would be different, sure. Um, but in the overall understanding of electricity that comes into a house, you're being robbed. You're being straight out robbed. You know, uh, it's unnecessary for that uh, to be that way. Uh, one of my subscriptions, maybe we'll find them or come across them when we get into that, <clears throat> has that um, has, has disclosed that as well too, and how the like electrical companies actually do that. Uh, water is another thing, and a lot of these uh, people that are going off grid are coming across these thieves. You know these. Um, misguided people, these these non-truthers, uh, how they're being forced off their own land because they won't comply to tap into the electric, the water, um, and don't even have to hook it up. Even it shows you it's more of a lie. There, there's people that are, buy land, they live on the land, they live off grid, they got solar, they got a well. They don't need you. They don't need the city's water and the city's electrical hookup. But they'll, the city will accept them to live on that land that they own if they at least pay for the hookup. They don't have to use it, but you, you have to pay for it to be hooked up um, and available. How crazy is that? You know? <clears throat> All right. So let's see what else we can get from... Um, merchant. All right, so that was Revelation. Uh, let's see Ezekiel seventeen four. Ezekiel seventeen four. And there's just one left after that. And we'll get into some current events and see what's on the subscribers. Seventeen four. Okay, let's see. This is titled "The Eagles and the Vine." And 17.4 just goes 1 through 24. Excuse me. Okay. So, um, he cropped off its topmost young twig and carved it to the land of trade. He set it in a city of merchants. Okay. Um, what is this? I see a riddle, I see a parable. The introduction of this says in verse 1, And the word of the Lord, it, and the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, um, pose a riddle and speak a parable to the house of Israel, and say, Thus say the Lord God, a great eagle which is with large wings and long pinions, full of feathers of various colors, came to Lebanon and took from the cedar the highest branch. He cropped off its topmost young twig and carried it to a land of trade. He set it in a city of merchants. Then he took some of the seed of the land and planted it in a fertile field. He placed it by abundant waters and set it like a willow tree. Okay, so the saying uh, grew roots, it spread, it, uh, sprout, it sprouted, and um, then another great eagle, feathers, and uh, let's say it sounds like there was thriving. Uh, they were planting and thriving on, um, now you see the fruits, the fruits of their um, um, of their planting bear fruit, bear roots. 
uh, it was planted on good soil, good water, and it sounds like it, this parable um, was all in reference um, to the Lord God, um, to Israel, uh, the eagles and the vine. All right, so let's see what the commentaries have to say. Um, but this is going 1 through 24. Which I'm not going to read. It's way too long. The third parable is about two eagles and a vine and refers to a political situation. It foretells especially to uh, Z Zebekiah what will be his fate and that of his army if he will not obey God's words. The first great eagle represents King Nebuchadnezzar, who appointed Zebekiah uh, as king in Jerusalem. The cedar points to David's dynasty. Okay, so I'm way off on my uh, on my interpretation there. Um, I looked at it as it more um, literal than metaphorically as well. Okay, um, so perfect example of how to really not take out of context uh, just parts of scripture uh, because you will misinterpret that and give the wrong meaning. All right, so I'm, I'm glad I corrected myself on this and read the commentaries. Right, it even still goes on talking about plants and wind and. Um, all different other words that can be extracted, uh, but with the wrong understanding of it, if you don't uh, read thoroughly from beginning to end. <clears throat> All right, but nonetheless, merchants are being uh, shown the importance of not only in parables, uh, but also literally as well, too. All right, our last um, our last one here. Have multi multiplied your merchants. Um, Three sixteen. In um, Nahum. Uh, in the book of Nahum. Three sixteen. Eleven ninety one. Micah and Nahum. And that was 3.16. Okay. And the title of this is The Woe of Nineveh. Nineveh, Nineveh. The Woe of Nineveh. And let's see, the commentaries have 15 and 18. No 16. All right, so let's not try to take this out of context. You have multiplied your merchants more than the stars of heaven. The locust plunders and flies away. So, an abundance, too much of something, um, a consideration as well. If you're starting a community, rebuilding, Phoenix coming out of the ashes, you know, the aftermath of something, and you have 20 people in your group. You can't all be blacksmiths. You can't all be fishermen. You need that variety of merchants um, that have different skill sets for the best chances of survival, the best chances of being as strong as possible to preach the gospel, to go into the city um, in this fashion as well, too. Um, and I'm going to give a warning here as well, that to go into the cities and preach the gospel, Ellen White doesn't mention anything else but preaching the gospel. She doesn't say go into the city and sell stuff or barter, just to preach the gospel. Sackcloth, Bible, if it's legal, you get away with it, um, scrolls, uh, and a caution as well, too, not to get yourself arrested or, or killed, you know, <clears throat> or banned from an area. Because just like there will be areas in the wilderness, there will be areas in the city. Whew. Excuse me. Sorry, I'm missing my water. 
entity. There will be areas in the city that will have their own sections, their own communities, their own beliefs and non-beliefs as well too. Uh, so you have to uh, keep a heads up about um, how you acclimate to that uh, situation, that environment, and that could change rapidly. It could change block to block. Uh, that's even now. You can even see that now in Manhattan. You got the Upper East Side. You know, wealthy. You got the uh, the village, the homosexuals. Um, you got the uh, this section for the musicians, and that section for the um, uh, for the the fish, the fish market. Um, you got Little Italy for the you know the Italian foods and uh, great great Italian foods. They have some great festivals there. Um, any Italians out there ever want to go to the best Italian place in the world besides Italy? Um, it's in the Bronx. It's called Arthur Avenue in the Bronx. Look it up. Go there. You won't regret it. Go there hungry. <laughs> you won't leave hungry. I guarantee you that. And uh, bring some doggy bags with you. Some shopping bags that take stuff home with you. Uh, it is whew, drooling to say the least. Okay. <clears throat> Let's see. You have multiplied your merchants more than the stars of the heaven. All right. Nothing out of this we're going to get other than what I just said. <clears throat> okay, so that's it. That wraps that up. I can talk about this for hours and hours. It's been an hour already almost about how to go about... <clears throat> your different... Uh, mood, different merchants, your different skills, your different trades, your different barters, your different meats and barleys and wheats and flowers. <clears throat> the processes too as well. How much energy, and energy is a big factor in survival off the grid because it burns calories. How much calories is it going to take you to burn to turn around and produce something out of that result of those calories? whether it's building a shelter, whether it's hunting or fishing or gardening. Um, we are nothing more than a matchstick, this f rotting flesh that we have on a slow burn. And make no doubt that we are a burning matchstick. <clears throat> In a sense, we are on fire. We're 98.6 degrees, um, and that's a slow burn. It's one way to look at it. That's what we are. But in the New Jerusalem, this body gets transformed into something else that doesn't burn, that doesn't have a lifespan. It's forever without sickness or disease. Um, <clears throat> we will have the same type of mind, but not the same mindset of understanding. And here just to live and worship and praise God on this earth. Uh, that's something to look forward to that's glorious. Um, so... You know, some people say that, you know, I don't fear death. I look forward, not me, myself. Uh, I don't either anyway. Uh, that they look forward to, um, you know, leaving this planet. Um, you really can't blame them once you understand the scripture, what we have to look forward to. Because the last, <clears throat> the last breath, heartbeat, and time we close our eyes before we open them again will be before the Lord. And it's very important to, uh, to grasp and to understand that and to live in, in live in, uh, you know, peaceful mindset because of that. Uh, so this time and energy we put into our uh, existence even now, you know, what is the result if I spend the next five years doing something, the next five minutes doing something, the next 50 years doing something? Um, and uh, some institutions paint a nice picture for that, saying, oh, when you reach this age, you have what's called retirement. Uh, you have, you know, to look forward to this, this, that, and, you know, in your bucket list. So, um, it's a matter of mindset. It's a matter of perspective. And what is your mindset and perspective going to be now to prepare for uh, end-time uh, prophecies to unfold uh, before the second coming of Christ? What is it you're going to do uh, to put into place now to be activated at that time? Um you know, at what threshold do you say, okay, I activate now plan B, level B. Um, militaries do it all the time. We're at level three. Now we're at level, you know, code orange or something. 
So have that uh, as well too in your mind. And let this, I gotta shut this off, and let this, um, and let this resonate within you uh, and your loved ones as well too. Try to come to an understanding and an agreement. Um, keep it in mind the current events, you know, the biblical events, um, the solar events. What is it that's going to have you activate that plan and do drills for that and practice it as well too? These events that we go are going to go through right now have significance upon this planet and have should have your concern because at any moment they can go critical they can um, snowball uh, and be a catalyst into a bigger problem and we need to be able to see that not only in real time but in without saying you're a prophet in future events and or and if you when I say future events I mean it could be within the next several hours or several days or weeks or months um, you know if I was doing these maps I think back in uh, October of 2016 and then into November and December I would have seen this great uptick of these of this bird flu pandemic epidemic um, going on and like this little red icon here it was enlarging um, across the uh, Asian area it was gaining a lot of uh, spreading all over here this was all filled up and I'll go to this monitor here and show you and this is only a small example of 12 incidences I don't know why they don't increase I think they just updated here according to these updates here 151 so 151 we got to remember that but again these days it's they just had some um, actually I think it was, was it South Korea North Korea that are on high alert right now because of um, they're expecting the for the bird flu pandemic and I think there was something um, watch my other video if you saw the other video that is making it airborne as well usually it's by contact all right, so they're calling this epidemic, biological. So it's all biological and an epidemic. What all hazards? China, South Korea, and uh, Nigeria. So that is what that is what this is here. <clears throat> that's going on, uh, perhaps seasonally. Perhaps this is something that just comes about. You know, October, November, December, then goes away uh, for whatever reason might have a cycle, might have a, something to do with the weathers, might have something to do with the migration, the travel of animals, birds, uh, who knows what else is traveling through the air. Pollen that might affect them, their immune system might get weakened because of the things that they eat or because of the exposure of certain things, waters as well. Everything has a cycle, even we have a cycle. All right, so let's scroll down here and see what we got going on. Um, current emergencies, no current emergencies. And this information is updated every five minutes. Okay, I see um, things from two days ago up to one hour ago, but very little minimal on the severity alert level indicator here. As you can see on the right side here, we have indicators zero through five, zero being the least severe, five being the worst case scenario um, but I think they also raise this level according to the ongoing effects of something as well too so like for exa example let's see a hazmat situation in the USA of Tennessee this could be a gas spill a chemical spill at a, at a you know a factory plant um, and it's contained and there's nothing else being leaked or further spreading so let's see what they have to say and that's probably the case it's like a fire it burns you put it out done with there you go perfect example an ammonia leak closed down several streets probably contained you know everybody go home nothing to look here 
Nearby Coca-Cola plant. Oh, good. Please. Uh, <laughs> shut them down. Uh, horrible stuff, that stuff. You know the Coca-Cola? You put that stuff in the paint of your car, it'll eat the paint away. Imagine what it does to your body. Several employees were outside the nearby plant because they started to smell ammonia inside their building. Oh, good, it was them. Okay. Um, hopefully no one got hurt, but they smelled it, and uh, I think that's about it. Transported to the medical center. least person had been transported. Okay. Ammonia. It's not like the ammonia you get in the store all the time, too, either. These things come in different concentrations, and uh, the one you get in the store is diluted, probably 95 98%. There's like iodine, there's like um, Clorox, bleach. A lot of things you get are so diluted that you have no idea the strength and the uh, destruction these things can cause. So if they're leaking ammonia, I'm sure it was being used for something, who knows what, um, in their process. And, and who knows, I'm not going to say they put it in their drink, because that wouldn't be legal for me to do and get me in trouble if they found out. But... <clears throat> I'm sure it's something for the process of uh, cleaning, right? All right, so this is why this is a level zero, okay? Um, fire in Ireland, event into space, ooh, okay. What is that? Never saw that before, that's a new one. Event into space, what could that be? Local spotted the object in the morning and informed... Us, it seems the object fell at a great speed as it has created a small crater in the ground of this village. Um, a mysterious rock-like object, which appeared to have fallen from the sky in an open-air field uh, area on the outskirts of the city, caused panic among locals. The dark, gray-colored object appears to be a meteorite and weighs around. This is exactly what I'm telling you about with NASA. NASA did not report this. They never will. And they're liars, like Satan. They're liars. Close that worthless piece of agency down, please. Feed the poor. House the homeless with that money. Weighs around four kilograms. Uh, a few other pieces of the rock like object were also found, police said, spotted an object in the morning and informed us. It seems the object fell at a great speed as it has created a small crater on the ground. Um, okay, police, he said, geological survey of the India and Forensic Science Laboratories officials have been informed about it. Now, what's next now is the, Smiths, the Smithsonian Institute, the Smithsonian, if I can say it, um, museum is going to come by and sweep it up with the authorities and it's going to disappear because it has unknown microviral diseases and plagues that could spread and wipe out mankind as we know it. It's radioactive. Stay away from it. <clears throat> You'll never hear about this again. In fact, I'm surprised it's even on this channel. It'll probably be taken off very shortly. It's a meteor. The sky is falling. In fact, you know what? I'm going to share it right now. So it gets more attention. Uh, the sky is falling. Post. I don't know why it keeps going to that other um, Facebook that I have. I have my Facebook open here. That's not that. And it um, doesn't even pick that up for some reason. Okay, let's go back to space. Okay, um, so that was event into space. What size is this? You guys getting the full view of this? Yes, good, perfect. Okay, <clears throat> all right, we both learned something today. Uh, volcano activity in the Philippines, a level zero. I'm sure it's just rumbling and smoking a little, otherwise it'd be up here in the emergency, current emergencies. 
epidemic hazard. They give a level three in Indonesia 12 hours ago. Let's see what that says. Health officials um, reported 58 cases of the bacterial disease leptospirosis, including eight fatalities since the beginning of the year, according to these guys, uh, is not only caused by rodents in the rice fields, but rat urine in homes can cause this disease. Uh, the public needs to maintain the cleanliness of the body and the environment and immediately seek treatment at the nearest public health center when sick. Lep uh, leptosis spirosis is caused by a corkscrew shaped bacterium called, uh, I'm going to pronounce that, is often referred to as rat fever due to the principal role rats. All right, so you know, if you live with rats and rat urine and feces, you're going to get rat diseases. Plain and simple. It's I know it's almost impossible to have control of this population of these pests, these rodents. Um, I'm surprised there's not more sickness in Manhattan. Actually, you come to think about it, that place is filled with cockroaches and rats. You know, in the sewers, and in the subways. Um, but I'm curious as to what they must do to keep those contained uh, as much as they do. It's such a busy place. They really don't like being around people. Um, but, you know, some of them aren't so shy and they get desperate and hungry. They're still going to come about. Um, so, important to fight these rodents as best you can. But out in the field where there's rice and food for them to eat continuously, they're going to multiply and, um, you know, be hard to control. Something also to be concerned about, folks, in the aftermath, when they don't, when their source of food is depleted, they're going to get desperate. They're going to get more violent and more, uh, more, uh, more bold, emboldened, um, as are other animals, as are humans. So, uh, rodents aren't going to be our only problem. Um, I mean, right now there's a problem here on Long Island. I haven't seen any bees. I haven't seen one bee yet this year so far. Uh, granted, the weather is fluctuating, but there are some warm days we've had, 70, 80, even the 90s. Uh, plenty of flowers around, not one bee. I believe these chemtrails have keep, killed off these bees. That's a big, big problem. That alone will, will cause chaos uh, on this planet. All right. Um, epidemic hazards, Santa Fe, state of New Mexico, volcano eruption, Japan, zero, that level zero hazmat, USA, California, vehicle, biological hazard, hazard, 13 days ago, a day ago, Nebraska. All right, nothing that's stand, standing out in severity, emergency here. <clears throat> All right, uh, two days ago, uh, we have an update from biological hazard. Uh, extreme weather in India, no updates. Uh, let's see what this update is in South Korea here. Update. South Korea Agricultural Ministry said on Monday it will raise its bird flu. Oh, that's what I was talking about. That's what I said before. South Korea to maximum. Bird flu alert raised to maximum from June 6th um, starting today. Okay. Um, because they found this pathogenic. Now, I believe pathogen is airborne. Um, it has a path that is uncontrolled and everywhere and anywhere because of the airflow. Uh, 2.3 just happened in Funny River, Alaska. Wow, there's people laughing that river. Uh, 2.3 depth, uh, very deep, 40 kilometers deep. Okay. All right, so folks, you have to be on the, uh, we have to keep watch out for that. South Korea. Um, they just raised their alert to maximum, and not even sure where they are on the map here. I don't think it. I don't think the map says uh, has that. Let's see if we go to our our Google Earth. Let me find 
find that out quickly. But our bandwidth is struggling here. We're on Wi-Fi. It's not even coming up. And there we go. Load it up. If anybody knows out there also about Google Earth, I went from one computer to another, logged in, and I lost all of my markings. How do you get those back? Anybody know? Let me know. All right, so let's see exactly where South Korea, for those of you like myself, aren't too geological savvy. The whole country should, should have a problem with that, but... Oh, I see. Okay, so it's right next to Japan. I know where Japan is. Japan is right over here. So here's South Korea over here. All right, so this is close to where the other bird flu pandemics were last year. Um, but they're raising this alert now, as of today, to their maximum level alert. And is it's in the news? No, it's not in the news. It's not in the media. All right, so um, for those of you that don't stick around to watch this ministry program broadcast uh, and just tap in in the beginning, you know, the scriptures aren't floating your boat, tickling your fancy, um, you're missing out on this, at least in the live stream. You could fast forward to it later, I guess. Uh, but this is of a big concern. <clears throat> so we're going to watch for this, these birds popping up over here over the next few weeks, few months. Um, and see one other update from a volcano eruption in uh, West Sumatra, Indonesia. May have done this already. <clears throat> The Regional Disaster Mitigation Agency of four regions in West Sumatra are on the alert after Mount Merapi uh, eruption on Monday. The four regions are uh, Tena Detra, I can't pronounce these cities, west of Sumatra will also deploy personnel to take swift measures if any disasters take, take place. We don't expect any disasters, but we have to be alert. Now, doesn't that sound familiar? Not too expected, but to take precautions, to stay alert. Hello. Can you see one drop shower ministry? I think that's what we're preaching here. Stay alert. All right, everything else is a few days old. Forest fires, flash floods, level four here. Um... Okay, everything's older, not much updates. All right, 25 minutes ago, we had a 2.1 an hour ago, 4.0 in Chile, 4.0 in Chile, uh, 4.2 in Peru. Talking about earthquakes here. Uh, a bunch of twos. Uh, we got United States and California, California, Mexico, Baja, why are they call Mexico, North America. I guess they share it, uh, that borderline or something. Um, twos and three point six in what happened? That just jumped. There you go. Three point six in Chile. Um, two point seven in Washington State. Four point three in Alaska. In Alaska. Um, Four point two in Europe. 4.4 in Japan, 4.3 Indonesia, 3.8, well, 4.5 just struck in Indonesia again. Indonesia is quaking and shaking, folks. That was the biggest one yet for the day. I'm sorry, 4.9 Indonesia, uh, eight hours ago. What is going on in Indonesia there? Uh, 5.0 Indonesia, 3.8 per Peru. 4.5 in China, 3.2 in North America, Alaska, uh, 4.1 Europe, Asia, 4.0 in Asia, Takar. All right, so Indonesia, let's point that out where you are in Indonesia. And uh, see what's shaking and quaking over there. That's a dog barking, in case you got that mic. I'm not sure my microphone is picking it up. There's a dog barking. Um, barking at the mailman. Typical dog. 
How come dogs don't like the mailman? Why is that? One job I wouldn't want to have. <laughs> Let's see. Um, where are we? All right, Indonesia. A lot of quakes over here. Got volcanoes, got quakes. You guys are seeing this, right? Okay. So, oh, Papua New Guinea, always quaking and shaking over here. You guys on the ring of fire? Where are you? There's Indonesia. Okay, north of Australia. Yeah, you're in that south ring of fire there. And the ring of fire goes all around here. It's always very violent over here. Tropical storms. Where are the tropical storms at? It is uh, that season. We're in tropical storm season and hurricane season. I uh, don't see any. We're in the aftermath here as well. All right, let's get on. Let's get on. I think uh, I think we're getting wrapped up here on these current events. Uh, nothing uh, extraordinary out of the ordinary. And again, folks, great reason to also you see all this stuff going on. Great reason to carry around with you, sleep with literally an emergency you know hazard radio not just for the weather uh, but it's for terrorism it's for being alerted of all different events um you know that could be activated by uh you know authority or personnel or something's happening uh to alert the public uh, and we're not always going to be alerted as well too um, you know, just as Christ is coming back within, within an hour, you think not, we're not going to be alerted. It's not going to be on the news, or we're not going to be getting a heads up for that. So um, you have to continuously be in prayer, be in repentance of your sin, and um, be found you know, worthy of his kingdom. When Christ comes back, you want to be found doing his work um, and not stuck in these worldly, uh, these worldly um, you know, distractions and uh, you know, of the flesh and sin. <clears throat> okay, where are we at? Um, active volcanoes on the 6th. Uh, we just uh, looked at those. There was nothing of an emergency. But they're always quaking and shaking, these quakes, these uh, volcanoes. No active tropical storms. And the super volcanoes are being monitored. June 6th, state of California, level 6 still. Um, and, oh, you, wee, wow, look at all these, uh, near-Earth objects coming by. I bet you our, uh, live meteor band is, is uh, going off the charts here. Must have been 15 or so. No, not much. Oh, there we go, there's one. <clears throat> All right. We got some activity. Usually we pop in here, there's nothing going on. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Alright, so they're splashing around up there. Something uh, for you guys to watch. Definitely splashing around up there. Hope there wasn't feedback on there. Gotta mute that too. <clears throat> Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 18 uh, near-Earth objects coming by today <clears throat> that we're being told, that we're being warned about, um, and perhaps that is one of the um, events into space uh, that were coming by. I doubt it, but a um, small, tiny uh, object like that, I don't even know if that could be detected. What is this? Something just happened? An event? Okay, we're clicking on that and should go to that. No, don't want to go to that. Um, I didn't even catch to see what that said. Is it on delay? In my um, videos here, sometimes we're on a delay. I could catch that again. Nope, missed it. All right, okay. I'll leave that open so we catch the delays on that. We missed that. But I want to refresh on that. See what I, see what that was. Let's see if I hit refresh. Uh, two minutes ago, biological hazard in France. Let's see if we get something uh, current up to date here. France was France last month detected a case of low pathogenic H7 bird flu at a farm in the center of the country. A report from the French Agricultural Ministry showed H7 is a less severe form than that of the H5N8 virus, which has sparked the culling of millions of poultry birds in recent months. Yeah, 38 million. The killing, the slaughtering. Well, it's going to, it's going to protect the human race. Um, you know, that's what it is. Uh, H7 bird flu was found in the rural district of uh, on a farm with 5,000 ducks and pheasants, said the ministry report, which was published by the World Health Organization on Tuesday. All birds on the farm were slaughtered. Uh, the report said duck farm duck farmers in France's southwest, the main production region for liver pate specialty foie gras, uh, resumed rearing last week after a six-week suspension ordered as part of uh, measures to stamp out the more uh, virulent H5N8 virus. France, which has the largest population poultry flock in the European Union has been one of the countries most affected by the H5N8 bird flu that has spread via wild birds across Europe since late last year. <coughs> Again, not, gonna, not in the news. It's, it doesn't even seem like it's being fully reported on here because how can they really keep up with it? It's great that these guys get this information. They must have uh, you know, some great people working for them on this uh, channel on this uh, website to get so much information so quickly. All right, so um, I wonder how they do that. Scanners maybe or something? A lot of boots on the ground or people reporting stuff into them. Um, again, but a low pathogenic. We'll look that up. Pathogenic. Let's see what we get for pathogenic, what comes up. Curious because I keep saying airborne, I don't want to mislead you guys. <clears throat> uh, dictionary definition bacteria. Uh, what kind of what is this? Uh, that doesn't look like a dictionary to me, it looks like media advertising stuff. Uh, Wikipedia, let's see what you got to say. Julian Assange, what do you got to say? WikiLeaks. Uh, are bacteria that can cause infection. Um, this article deals with human pathogenic bacteria. Although most bacteria are harmless and often beneficial, some are pathogenic. Uh, of the bacterial diseases with the highest disease burden is tuberculosis. Cause um, of the bacteria, tuberculosis. Um, caused by bacterium, uh, uh, which which kills about 2 million people a year, mostly in sub-Saharan Africa. Pathogenic bacteria contribute 
to other globally important diseases such as pneumonia, which can be caused by bacteria such as streptococcus, uh, all these other things, foodborne illnesses, which are caused by bacteria such as uh, Shingella, I can't pronounce the pathogen, bacteria caused by infections as tetanus, typhoid, um, <clears throat> high mortality rate in uh, infants, uh, mortality rate in developing countries. Um, still doesn't say by touch or by, uh, is it airborne? Uh, certain conditions, entry through the skin via a cut through sexual activities, compromising immune deficiencies. Um, all right, so so it is. Uh, it does, could be, could not, could could not, could could not, not sure. Typically re, re, reside on healthy skin, um, irritated skin infections. You know. <clears throat> it seems like it's by touch, but I, I see, I hear pneumonia, I think airborne, um, and who's to say it can't be made airborne by flakiness or catching a ride on something else. All right, well, it's mobile, to say the least. It's not a, not like a fungus of a mushroom sitting on a, sitting on a tree somewhere. This stuff is mobile. All right, let's see if we get one more here. It's always good, good to get a second opinion, third opinion. Merriam-Webster Dictionary. <clears throat> These guys are uh, pretty popular. Hopefully without the pop-up advertising. Causing or capable of causing disease. That's it. Microorganisms. Oh boy. You call that a definition? Sorry, I came by. <clears throat> All right, I digress. Um, so we're going to keep on top of that and uh, see what's going on. I'm giving you a heads up now. I'm telling you, it's going to be a bad, bad time with these bird flus. It's really going to. Uh, be a big problem in this world coming up. Okay, uh, five minutes ago, hazmat in USA, state of uh, Illinois. <clears throat> Seven minutes ago, we did uh, France. Okay, we just did that. What's the hazmat in uh, Illinois? Chicago. Seven people, including two firemen, were hospitalized late Monday. Night after hazmat situation in Northwest Suburban Warehouse, Streamwood Police said officials responded to a fire alarm just after 11 p.m. Employees were at the, uh, the Banana Place. Some Banana Fresh Express Warehouse told them there was a chemical leak. Oh, you mean the chemicals they use to spray the bananas when they're green to make them yellow? That chemical? You guys didn't know that, did you? They take, when you, bananas are grown, they're grown, um, green and they pop these smoke bombs I don't know what it is that it's in them these chemical that they throw into the back of the trucks and they turns them yellow I don't know what's wrong with green what does it matter now they get all these chemicals in it <clears throat> so if you get, if you ever get a chance to get green bananas that's better for you all right um, another 2.0 just happened in California very shallow by the salt and sea beach all right, so these guys uh, have a chemical leak at a fire alarm, large industrial complex processing food, including salads, vegetables. Uh, confirmed it was an ammonia leak, another ammonia leak. <clears throat> Remember last year, the year before, we kept having those plants, chemical plants. I think a lot was in Japan, kept exploding. You know, you got to wonder if it's some something that is in space or frequency causing this or is it um you know military <clears throat> oh boy terror attack france this happened capital city france 
Just had another a terror attack right now, 12.30 p.m. Eastern Time, June 6th. <clears throat> Let's see. A man has just been shot by police outside of Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris, France, after he attacked an officer with a hammer. Come on, stop with the word terrorism. They really use this so frivolously, so... They're calling our own patriots in the United States terrorists because they're standing up for their rights. And, um, you know, they were occupying that uh, in Nevada out there, that warehouse that um, nobody uses anymore. And they're terrorists. Guy's got a hammer and he attacked a cop. He's a terrorist. Suspect is wounded in the chest while the officer has minor injuries. All right. Um, officials say it's a terrorism incident. All right. It's the boogeyman. You know, um, and like I was saying in the beginning of this broadcast, that they really are having this long-term plan here, and, and this is my belief, that uh, they want to strike fear into people because of everything now is a terrorist attack. It's an emergency. You know, we need to have fully automatic uh, AK-47s now um, are, uh, with our police being armed like that. You know, it's shamefully, be armed. You know, it's great, you know. Um, but if everybody was armed and you didn't take guns away from society and civilians, you know, like like um, their, their babies or something, there wouldn't be these problems, you know. There wouldn't be so much going on um, with these, you know, attacks, these incidences, which half of them are, or probably more than half of them are um, fake anyway. Um... All right, so now they're going to refer back to the other one. Open an investigation. They sealed off the area. Big, big to do. They're making the boogeyman. I just saw it. There we go. Attacks by jihadists in 2015. And that's what they're doing. You know, the, here, here, let, let me play this out for you. Let me play this scenario out for you. They increase here in the United States, these, and I put in quotes, terrorist attacks. The liberal left sissies that don't like guns, that don't carry guns, uh, and how, how the other half of the other um, population that likes guns, that either can't afford it, or, or are on some sort of list that they can't get approved, or their spouses don't approve of it, or their job doesn't approve of it, uh, because they don't like guns on their job, all of a sudden now these terrorist attacks start ramping up here in the United States. People cry out, <clears throat> and there's the, then there's all of a sudden their solution, which will be, no doubt, less rights, less constitution, more government laws and rules in place, which aren't, isn't going to solve the problem anyway. You know, arm everyone... You get 16 years old, you have to go to training in high school. Did you know that my grandfather used to tell me that he used to go to high school with his rifle and he used to have rifle practice after? He'd carry it to school, put it in his locker. No big deal. You know? And if everyone was armed like that, you would think twice about breaking out your own gun and causing a problem. How do you put that into perspective? Um... Would you go to a police station with a gun and lay it on a table and say, I demand to speak to somebody right now? No, you'd be shot on spot. You probably wouldn't even get into the depart into, into the front door with it. Um, and same thing with uh, everything else, a restaurant, a job, you know, a shopping mall. Everyone's open carry all over the place, you know, and that's the way it should be. Problem solved. But... They want to take away, folks, this right because it gives them more control. The people aren't armed. They can't defend themselves. And they can pass any laws they want, put people in prison, and the people can only sometimes speak up with their words. All right, so, folks, as we're going on here, the uh, world is quaking and shaking, and um, as Begley would say, the devil's back is breaking. I can't, can't even believe they said that it was a terrorist event.
uh, terrorist uh, event event all right let's give a quick look over here with um, what's happening on YouTube <clears throat> let's refresh this meteors are going by you know too also on this there's a timeline you can put your mouse over this uh, and see it as well too let's see that real quick do it here, yeah. Some computers will do this. Some computer computers won't allow you to do this. But look, as I'm going back, look at all the uh, strikes we're getting. Ooh, that was a big batch. The timeline is on, in the way. Look at that right there. Minus 537. Can we go to that? Yeah, look at that. There's a cluster. There's another long one right there. <clears throat> Look at that. Wow. So they're definitely here today. Ooh, wait. Look at it. Look how fast I'm going. But look at them. Wow. Look at that. Oh, my God. Got to hear that. Come on. Well, you can't hear it? Well, I has it muted. That was just at uh, 1217. It's 1237 right now. buffering <clears throat> all right they're all over the place so keep that uh, window close to you emergency survival supplies you guys need some come over here come get it while you still can heed the warning um, I also just put some new links up here too for um, the other um, bunker the uh, worthingtonbunkers.com because I don't have a purchase button there um, but I made a link to the uh, add to cart which comes to here uh, and it is a waterproof Bibles now if you guys want to get these they float to King James Version Bible free shipping $99 tax included um, <clears throat> so here yeah the Worthington Bunker, Bunkers we got three packages here just added as well uh, for um, it's consulting. <clears throat> uh, this is for installing the bunker, and um, I'm sorry. No, this is for the pre-bunker installation. Uh, this is for the installation itself until the end for someone to stay on staff because this is all subcontracted out. This stuff, uh, except me or my team to uh, be on site or consult you. We we don't subcontract that out, uh, and we do this ourselves. Well, as this is for the um, uh, consulting of preparing before, during, and after with a stockpile property to buy, etc., etc. All right, uh, one drop shower, a lot of good links here. Bibles for sale over here, too. Uh, incident map, the buoy center. Uh, let's check out the buoy center since we're here. See that? Anything shaking? Any terrorist buoys out there? <clears throat> We need more buoys activated here, folks, on the uh, Atlantic area. There's no buoys here. We need this alert. We need this. This whole ridge over here can uh, collapse at any time. Quake, the Canary Islands over here could send a tsunami. And this isn't enough warning. These are all down. And look at this. It's like a Hail Mary football pass right into the end zone without warning. That's a shame. All right, so nothing uh, trans, uh, transpiring over there. All right, uh, Rand, Ron Paul, Liberty Report, uh, Newfound Era, uh, Josh Axe, great guy. 
Acts of the Apostles. You guys don't want to understand uh, Muslims and the Quran. This guy uh, does it all. Really uh, well knowledge in the Bible and the Quran. But he's a Christian. All right, Sergeant Report. Puppy dogs, lollipops, and unicorns. Huh? Oh, must be talking about um. Which we'll call it. Must be talking about the um. Liberals. Singing hum, hum and Nagila. Let's see. Um, Tao. That's the devil beast. False prophet in these verses. If you Google Antichrist in the Bible, will show you the verses about it. Many Antichrists were already about. Not sure what that's from. All right. We'll look at that later. All right, uh, breaking Paris attack Notre Dame with hammer. It was Paul Bagley, of course. Not a Paris, not a, not a terrorist attack. Bagley, some sicko with a hammer that's got a death wish. Uh, let's see, two night stormy solo hammock. Rich from Boston, Trump and his Kabbalah teacher. <clears throat> Uh, London Bridge officers evacuated. Dabu 7, nothing fancy. Woodsman, Paul Mountain Review. So far, ministry, prophecy update. The true tomb of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Dabu 7, Notre Dame. Police uh, operation is ongoing. What? Heard to stay away. An hour ago. Dabu got that, is that the same report? How did he get that an hour ago? He's got some good sources. Wow. Go Dabu. Ten Kitchen Gadgets. Uh, all right, Mr. Gear, Life Hacks. Breaking Trump News Network. It's always uh, some good information coming out of that. Lawsuits. Lawsuit exposes former Speaker of the House for rape of a 10-year-old boy in a bathroom. There we go. <clears throat> All right. Uh, this guy, Steve. Opus 8. Not sure what that's about. Nothing fancy. Urban kayaking. Uh, if you guys are into uh, Nikola Tesla and Leeds Scallon, uh, this guy's always experimenting, trying to reproduce uh, the original um, frequencies and motor that he used to move the coral castle rocks around. Okay, um, rescheduled Paul Begley. Yes, he's doing a broadcast last night, tonight, next couple of nights at 10 p.m. instead because uh, Heidi just had surgery on her hips and it went well, praise God. <clears throat> Convention of States. Get on board, guys. This is going to happen. Uh, I think there's about 11 states now signed up for this. Article 5. Um, let's see. Marine Maine's Matt Harrington. Time has come for states to impose physical restraints on Congress. Amen to that. All right. Uh, Israeli News Live with Stephen Bendenu. U.S. is closing in on Damascus. A ruinous heap. Chris Ann Hall, constitutionalist attorney. She goes around the country and telling politicians how to be politicians because they don't understand the Constitution. So she has to go around and teaching them. Disclosure Media, Orville Lake Spillway Cam. I'm telling you, but we we really uh, got lucky with this. It's still in danger, but praise God, it hasn't been a breach of this on a major scale. Um. No idea who this is or why I'm subscribed to this. Again, checking the dams. Bonus. Um, <clears throat> I'll have to look into that before I unsubscribe. Eric Berg, about health and fitness. A lot of good stuff. Uh, this is of curiosity. This might be something coming about. Um, BP Earthwatch has not reported on this. An active sunspot aligns with our planet. Um, could be hit by a series of solar flares. Now I did see this, if you want to see this real quick, uh, this our planet alignment with the Sun is on the southern hemisphere. This is not on the southern hemisphere. So I'm not sure if he's uh, got his information correct here on this.
Okay. <clears throat> so this guy here is what he's talking about, but we are aligned down here. You split the sun in half, you know, if we go in half here, this is the southern, this is where we are aligned with the sun here. So a direct hit would come from this area, this arena, this area right here. So if we had a big explosion here, bang, we'd be in trouble. Another Carrington event. <clears throat> All right. Um, yeah, we can get a glancing blow because this is going to go above us, really, if it comes out. Unless it's big enough, it's going to understand it's going to travel all that distance, and it gets dispersed as it goes about part further and further. And that's not what just happened. That's something else. Oh, that's it on the 6th. I'm sorry. That was facing away from us. What is that? Little glitches you see. What was that? Ah, it's happening too fast to see. All right, so we got to keep our eye on that. Keep on touch with, uh, keep watching BP Earth Watch. He'll uh, give us some updates on that. Uh, where am I? Facebook? I don't want to be there. I want to be, um, I'll keep that there, I guess, to see the uh, what's going on here. YouTube. All right. Um, some cool inventions. Wild Dog Chase and Paula. Convention of States again. That's good. Pat Campbell show. Colburn. Lowe's lid off constitutional secret to smash the D.C. monopoly. <clears throat> good. Drain the swamp. All right, what else? Oh, there's Morris. There's my buddy Morris. He's in uh, Cambodia. Throw this guy a dollar. He loves it. Five dollars, if you guys can. Uh, Qatar blockade expected for Iran. Escalation likely. Uh, it's 108. Morris, 108. Great channel. Israeli is live. Russia intercepts B-52 bomber over ballistic. Over Baltic. <clears throat> uh, Christ forgiveness. Uh, this is... Um, David Lynn in Canada. He's always doing street preaching. He's a great guy, great Christian. Um, terrorist strike Saudi Arabia just surprised everyone and gave Trump the greatest gift of his life. Terror strike Saudi Arabia. Uh, not sure what that is. One step survival. <clears throat> How does this guy? Um, mini get home bag. Great to learn about. Interesting to uh, grow your own and your own preparedness. Word for today, Christian Truther starts off with some scriptures. It's great. It finally happened. The Senate just did exactly, just did exactly what everyone wanted to Hillary Clinton. Okay. All right. So just check out what that is. Uh, build the wall rally at Trump Towers in New York City going on. Okay. You guys can get there, get there, join in. Uh, this is reported by Mert uh, Melfa, um, 6-3. That was in 6-3, I'm sorry, so I don't know if it's still going on. But yeah, we got to get on this guy's case. You know, he uh, said he's going to build the wall. We want it built. But Congress didn't approve the budget for it. So I, I wrote the White House, actually, a couple months ago, saying, I will get your wall paid for by sponsors advertising banners on the wall and I'll go to Patriot stores Patriot corporations like um, how about like Boeing and Lockheed Martin and Raytheon that make billions of dollars off our tax dollars to put it back into our country and build a wall but they'd rather build bombs and planes um, to kill from a distance no how about now you spend uh, 200 million dollars for an advertised banner on the wall okay to help pay for it Thank you very much. Give us some of our money back. Um, and then you go to, um, you know, Smith & Wesson. You go to all these um, other stores, all these manu manufacturers that are making hundreds of millions of dollars off of us uh, and put it back into our country. Make, make the wall a big billboard. You know how much media is going to be um, there when they first start building the wall? 
and how much more attention they'll get when they see it. And you know the mainstream media won't be there saying, oh, it's built, sponsored by Smith & Wesson, you know, <laughs> gun manufacturer. Amen. All right, uh, 2020 for Hillary. All right, yeah, good luck with that. Common Sense Show with Dave Hodges. He's got a lot of good videos out there. The deep, the deep State will be the death of us all. Of course it will. Um, <clears throat> off grid with Doug and Stacy. He's on a plane. Wow, it's good to see. Good to see you out there, Doug. Uh, has Putin found Jesus? I certainly hope so. Uh, the globalists keep you from being all that you can be. Jermaine Fishwick. Not sure what that is. Not sure who this is. Oh, a Tesla fan. Okay, I'm sure I subscribe to him. Uh, Nemesis Maturity, heads up, Earth is passing through a stream of debris from an unknown source. Okay, well, let me just prove that to you on the uh, live media monitoring. Bravo, Alternative Media, okay. Day 137, Trump White House, Seth Rich, and all brothers, and George Webb. Well, Seth Rich was that staffer that was murdered by the Clintons. Chemtrails, reset of the day, 4K. <clears throat> Another chem trailer like uh, me exposing this to you guys. That's good. God bless you, brother. Um, so check him out. Chemtrails, MTN View, Mountain View. Everyone else has got to start doing this. You got a YouTube channel? You can make one just on that alone. There's Dutch Sense. He did his uh, nightly update last night. Actually, no, it is live now. He just leaves the globe circling out there. Um, <clears throat> People just check it out. Hey, here's another pastor. London attack. Can we please stop calling Islam the religion of peace? It's not. Amen. And Paul Begley did his broadcast last night at 10 p.m. No escape. Everyone knew Russia was the excuse. All right. Um, <clears throat> Dave, uh, this guy is for ham radio. If you want a good ham radio guy. Uh, let's see, Hollywood Apocalyptic TV Series, Last Evangelist, Paul Bagley to guest star. Oh, good. All right, White Horse Media, um, for um, those of you that are Seventh-day Adventists or want to check us out, I am a Seventh-day Adventist, warning about false testimonies. All right, uh, we are changed is Luke. Putin owns Megyn Kelly. Oh, she, needs, she needs to be a waitress somewhere, that woman. And uh, what else? Cold case update. Uh, what did? What we didn't learn at Bilderberg. Chemtrails, shooter. High winds. That, that mathematics of rainbows. <clears throat> All right, wrapping it up, folks. I'm getting tired. All right, let's shut it down. And we're back. And we're all moved around. Folks. Okay. Ugh. That's right, I'm moving. All right, I want to cover up my uh, Noah, the original Doomsday Prepper shirt here. Okay, so folks, we're going to wrap it up. If you have not yet given your life to Jesus Christ, please do so. Please repent of your sins. Um, call upon the name of the Lord and, and ask him into your heart, into your life. Tell him that you believe in his son, Jesus Christ, as the true living son of God, and that he died for your sins on the cross, rose from the dead, ascended to heaven, and you believe that he's coming back again. And they ask to have mercy on your soul now and at the hour of that death, um, of your death. And um, go get baptized, fully submerged at a church near you. Tell them you got saved. And that um, do you, if you have a Bible, to get a Bible, um, start living a Christian life, God-fearing life. Join others that are like-minded. Um, if you like the message that you hear on this uh, broadcast, please consider uh, supporting us um, through... Um, through the donation button on our website, onedropshower.org. 
and getting a, <coughs> excuse me, emergency supplies on our website, uh, ambertracks.com. And um, also uh, on our bunker preparedness survival training site, worthingtonbunkers.com. Uh, what else? So much to watch out for. You got to watch out for these things. Uh, we started off this today's broadcast and lesson about um, how to use things that were used in the Bible, such as wheat and um, um, barley um, and other things that they used as merchants to trade and barter with that you need to consider as well. What's going to be of value in the aftermath of a catastrophic apocalyptic events, man-made or coming from heaven or from um, nature as well that could uh, put us into turmoil at any moment. You know, we get perfect examples uh, on the maps we just went over. Uh, as we're broadcasting live, a couple of things happened. Um, uh, so be prepared for that in your mind, physically, emotionally, spiritually. Uh, please comment, please share. Uh, we need to gain subscribers. We need to build this ministry. I'm coming to a threshold uh, in probably in about two months now, July, August, probably by the end of August, where I'll have, um, God willing, full strength back of this hand. Uh, I might be going into surgery again at the end of the month because this, the uh, scar tissue underneath there is not detaching. Um, so I have to constantly try to detach this myself. Otherwise, she has to go in and cut it out again. Uh, that's going to delay it further. Um, in even more need for your support. So whatever you can do to support this message with prayers, with finances, with buying products, with spreading this message, commenting. Um, if you have a Facebook, share it, share the link. If you have a YouTube, share the link, Twitter, etc., etc., etc. All right, let's uh, close up with a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, dear Lord, for this opportunity to spread your word, your gospels, and to uh, show others how to best win souls for your kingdom, how to best prepare. And thank you for the examples, Lord, you left behind in scriptures about um, how to um, be as the merchants were being uh, without being like Babylon um, and to uh, prepare these uh, end time events uh, with such as you did in the Bible there with examples of wheat and barley uh, and grains and flowers uh, please help us and our listeners, dear Lord, to uh, prepare as well as those times were of what is really of important and of value so that we may re maintain ourselves to be strong and healthy and physically uh, and mentally and emotionally and spiritually ready for your son's coming, uh, that we may be able to survive in the wilderness before these times and to go into the cities to preach your word and gospel. Please uh, resonate this message, dear Lord. Uh, with wisdom and knowledge and understanding to all our viewers that are here with us live and in the archives. Please bless them in their homes and their children, Lord, and uh, please bless our country. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us today. Hopefully we'll see you again tomorrow, God willing, 11 a.m. on Facebook at our channel, facebook.com forward slash Amber Tracks. God bless you. Bye-bye.